mailbag question comes to us from Brazil. Robert, I need to travel to the U.S. with my Indian rosewood guitar. Will I have problems with the CITES regulations? Ricardo in Brazil. That is a very good question, Ricardo. Now, everybody knows that on January 2nd, 2017, uh, Delbergias, all uh, rosewoods, as well as Bubingas, went on the Appendix 2 of the CITES Treaty. Uh, Brazilian rosewood has been on Appendix 1 for a number of years. In other words, they're uh, in trouble of being or threatened with extinction. Now, uh, fortunately, Fish and Wildlife Service sent me a letter here recently, uh, and it has answered a lot of the questions about the issues that have risen uh, due to the uh, January 2nd, 2017 restrictions uh, of Rosewood. I've got a lot of notes here. Uh, Ricardo is going to answer your question. Hopefully it will answer a lot of other people's questions about uh, how the restriction pertain to us as luthiers as well as musicians. So here we go. I'm going to try and pass the information on here in a quick and, and easy format, but I'm going to have to refer to my notes. First of all, let's address the non-commercial aspect of uh, the CITES uh, restrictions on Rosewood. At the 69th meeting of the CITES Standing Committee held in November, December of 2017, the CITES and parties agreed to a number of interim interpretations of the term non-commercial. So, non-commercial, what is it? The cross-border movement of items, such as musical instruments for purposes including but not limited to personal use, paid or unpaid performances, uh, display or competition, for example, also uh, temporary ex exhibitions, and when such cross-border movement will not lead to the sale of the item and the item is returned to the country where the item is normally held. Also, the cross-border movement of an item such as a musical instrument for the purpose of being repaired in view of the fact that the item will remain under the ownership of the same person and that such transport will not lead to the sale of that item. The return of the, to the seller or manufacturer of a product under warranty after sales service should also be considered as a non-commercial transaction. So note, also, such transactions are considered non-commercial regardless of whether or not there's a fee associated with the repair of the item. That's good news. But if they have Appendix 1 items like Brazilian rosewood, uh, ivory, tortoise shell, etc., they must have the permit. The loan of an item, such as a musical instrument for exhibition in museums, competition, or performance purposes, is also considered non-commercial. Cross-border movement for the purpose of trade shows and trade fairs is considered a commercial transaction. So, Ricardo, there's an exemption for personal items. Uh, paragraph B and annotation 15 of that paragraph it refers to an exemption of personal, personal items with less than 10 kilos. And there's been some questions around that. What is the 10 kilos? First of all, let's talk, talk about the personal, exempts, uh, personal effects exemption. Under CITES, the term personal or household effects means specimens that are personally owned and legally acquired and worn, carried, or included in personal baggage as a part or a part of a household move. Generally speaking, items that meet this definition are exempt from the CITES requirements. However, please also note that currently under U.S. regulations, species included in Appendix 1 do not qualify for the personal effects exemption. So Brazilian rosewood, ivory, tortoise again, and et cetera, uh, do not qualify for this personal effects exemption. Non-commercial international trade of a maximum total weight of 10 kilos per shipment does not require CITES documentation. Now, the Fish and Wildlife Service clarified this because there's a lot of issues arising around that 10 kilos definition. What is it? They have clarified this to mean that the total weight of the prohibited species, not the total weight of the instrument, unless the instrument, of course, is made out entirely of a prohibited species, which I, you know, would be difficult. It also does not include the case. So anything under 10 kilograms uh, does not require the CITES documentation. So I hope this is helping, Ricardo. A lot of information here to delve into. Let's go into the commercial aspect of things for us luthiers and uh, uh, musicians, traveling musicians. Here's a question that arose. Do I need CITES documents for a commercial transaction for a single instrument if the instrument has under 10 kilos of Dalbergia or rosewood? And the answer is yes. Under the scenario, you would need a CITES document. 10 kilo exception is only for non-commercial use. Trade shows. A lot of luthiers want to go to trade shows. Do you need CITES documentation to go to the trade show? Yes. 
Uh, and a certificate of registration is not sufficient. In other words, if you're registered for the trade show, uh, you, uh, in addition to that, you need your CITES documentation. And remember that also anything on Appendix 1, you need uh, a guitar passport or uh, some type of CITES documentation for that as well. Here's another question. I rarely sell my guitars outside the United States, but I have a customer coming to the United States to pick up a guitar in February. Will they be able to fly back to Japan with their instrument? Here's what the Fish and Wildlife Service says about that. Pay attention, luthiers. Because the sale took place in the United States, if the individual travels to the United States and carries, hand carries the instrument back to Japan, this will be considered a personal effect and not subject to CITES. However, the exemption under CITES does not apply for Appendix 1. Once again, Brazilian rosewood, uh, ivory, tortoiseshell, those things uh, do not apply. They are not exempt. So, and because of those, the individual must obtain a CITES document before returning to Japan with the instrument. Now, there's a word of caution here. Fish and Wildlife says that not all CITES parties uh, um, apply uniformly the exemption, so please uh, advise your customer to confirm with the Japanese CITES authorities that they share this interpretation. If Japan requires that the guitar be accompanied by U.S. Uh, CITES document, Fish and Wildlife Service can indeed uh, issue that, uh, that document. But that's good news for us small-time luthiers. A client can come and pick up the instrument if he likes. Now, what about traveling musicians? How does this all apply to the traveling musicians? Uh, there's uh, guidance for traveling musicians, and there's an overview of critical topics that can be seen at the League of American Orchestras webinar. Now, I'll put that uh, link here on the screen. Uh, it's about an hour-long webinar with a lot of these questions, and uh, I hope it uh, will answer some of the questions for you. So, permit requirements for individuals. You're an individual traveling musician. Does my instrument need a permit when I travel with it? It does not have CITES-listed wildlife components, for example, ivory, uh, Brazilian rosewood, but it does have a Penix II rosewood. This question relates to paragraph B of Annotation 15, as it applies to Delberg and Bubinga. In other words, falls under the 10 kilogram exemption, and you're good to go. This includes, but is not limited to, personal use, paid or unpaid performances, display or competition. Remember that the 10 kilogram uh, threshold refers to the weight of the protected species and not the entire instrument, unless the whole instrument is made out of the uh, prohibited species. However, some instruments may contain more than 10 kilograms, that's a hard word to say, 10 kilograms of the protected species such as a double bass or marimba or certain drums. Now, I would assume that those are included in exemption, but it's really not clear, and perhaps that will need to be clarified at a, at a future meeting. Remember, though, that if even in Appendix 2, Delberga or Babinga in an instrument, if it's less than 10, 10 kilograms, if it is being traded internationally for commercial purposes, such as sale, it must be accompanied by the CITES document. So don't plan on taking your instrument to a gig and selling it. Now, what about orchestras? You have a lot of people, a quartet, for example, or an entire orchestra traveling with instruments. There's an exemption for that as well. Regarding the interpretation of the terms in paragraph B, annotation 15, there it comes again, a personal exemption. In the case of orchestras, musical ensembles and similar groups which travel with all instruments in the form of consolidated shipment. The cross-border movement of musical instruments in a container together with or prior to the traveling of the group is considered a consolidated shipment. In such cases, the total weight of the wood uh, in the instruments constituting the consolidated shipment is likely to exceed the 10 kil kilogram exemption. So such, uh, excuse me, such consolidated shipments should nonetheless not require a CITES document. Uh, Instrument, if the instruments weigh less than 10 kilograms, or the individual instruments weigh less than 10 kilograms. In other words, good news. Put it all in one big container, ship it. It's just as if you were traveling with an individual instrument, as long as it's under that 10 kilogram exemption. Oh my God, what a mess, huh, Ricardo? We've opened up a can of worms here. Uh, I hope this clarifies your uh, question. Feel free to travel with, with your personal items, not an issue. Uh, even with uh, traveling musicians and orchestras, we've learned that it's not an issue. However, in 2019, there's going to be another meeting. So these things might change. They might become easier, might become more restricted. Don't take my word for it. Do your homework. Do your research. But you should be good to go. I have students come in from outside of the United States all the time. 
they take my uh, six-day uh, guitar building course and they travel home with their instruments and there's been no issues based on annotation 15 of paragraph B. So, happy building, happy playing. Let's go make some solder. Mm -hmm.